Girls, we need to have a sit down and have a talk. But yeah, I just got done with the 11th episode of Super Cub and yeah, a little I'm a little frustrated. I'm a little frustrated. The the beginning part of it was very was very rough, but uh it did end up kind of concluding very with the usual nature of Super Cub, kind of returning to that very cute and very inspiring uh nature, but yeah, so yeah, the episode opened up with them kind of recapping the fact that Koguma got a call from she she is in a riverbed, and she is apparently fell off this this cat trail. She has veered off and fell into this uh, this little creek, and Koguma rushes out there with her super cub, kind of pulls her back to shore, helps her climb up the side of the shore, and then go back to her place where she can get a nice warm bath and eat something, and then Reiko shows up with her destroyed bike, and... They have like a little nice little moment together before they end up taking she back to her place. And the parents are very happy about it. They give them a free pass for a year for both the cafe and the bread. And then it kind of concludes with almost kind of this sense of everything kind of being put to a halt. Like everything's on hold. Uh, Everything with she's life is put on hold. Everything with Koguma and Reiko, they're not really doing anything just because they've prepared for the cold, and there's just no, she puts it as there's no opponents that they have ahead of them to fight, until eventually she wanting to kind of experience spring so much because of what all happened to her, they all decide to go to a nearby uh, prefect, which already has the blossoms happening, to go there and see the the blossoming flower, the blossoming trees, and and kind of see spring already, which kind of inspires them. So, um, so yeah, to get to get my <laughs> my issues out of the way, yeah, this the beginning of this episode really frustrated me, and I and it's annoying because I I almost want to give Koguma and them a pass just because the idea they are children, so how they handle the situation is going to be pretty immature, and so when when Koguma shows up and she's like, "Are you all right?" and she pulls her to the side and then uh, kind of. I don't mind Koguma's nature here because it technically is her. She's very cold. She does have moments where she's she is gaining emotion. She's gaining uh, things in her life, but her demeanor is still technically to most people cold. She doesn't really respond to things like most people would, very nurturing and stuff. She's kind of like, okay, I'm going to help you, but you're not to help me. Okay, we're up here. Uh, Reiko's going to show up. She's going to get your bike. Let's go back to my place. Okay, let's go. She's very cold. She doesn't. She doesn't have a very overly nurturing uh, nature to her, which is her character. The problem is, is the lack of knowledge. And I and I, I don't know. I I, I, I thought that Japan kind of has a a very uh, informative education system based on um, survival tactics, uh, not survival tactics like you know combat or anything, but like. A natural disasters. I thought that they were pretty heavy and very strict about teaching survival uh, to students because uh, they do have a lot of natural disasters. They have hurricanes. They have typhoons. They have earthquakes. They have tsunamis. Uh, and these are kind of things that have, again, I thought I was pretty sure that their education system is pretty good about teaching this kind of stuff. And so for Koguma to have zero... <laughs> zero knowledge of what to do in the situation is kind of a little baffling. And again, I can kind of chop it up to her immaturity, her young nature, and the fact that she just may have displaced it because of her situation, her personal dis- situation with her parents not being there and living on her own. But she is going through the education system, and she's showing zero common sense to what you should do in a survival situation. Yes, it is good that she pulls she out of the creek because hypothermia sets in and that could kill her really quickly or at least damage her permanently, mentally and everything. But beyond that point is where it gets really agitating. It's like, okay, pulling her up the creek bank, throwing her in a basket and driving, which, by the way, I, I, I kicked myself for the last two episodes not acknowledging the uh, the, the the pocket she situation that Reiko keeps mentioning, like, oh, you can f- probably fit in this little box that I have so I can keep you wherever I go. And she keeps bringing this up, and I, I loved it to death, and I kept forgetting to mention on the on the, po- on the actual video impressions, but 
she finally got her she fi- we finally got her our, our basket she moment where we could just kind of throw her in his basket and drive off but um still you don't do that with an injured person and, and it's annoying because it's like she could possibly not know she's injured because of the situation the cold the hyper possible hypothermia she could possibly not even know herself that she's injured because she just doesn't feel it Koguma not asking and not inquiring enough or even assuming that she's not injured could progress her injuries further. Thankfully, we're assuming that nothing's wrong with she, but the assumption's there and she could have been more further hurt than she actually is. Her not going to the hospital to even check for maybe a brain injury is very troubling. <laughs> and this sucks because it's like I'm overthinking it, but you painted it as a very dire situation. You left us on a cliffhanger and then you come back and just throw her in a basket and drive off because Super Cub saved the day. That's where it's frustrating to me. And again, overthinking it, but that's what the position the writers and the directors put us in that makes it frustrating. She needs to go to a hospital. She, they should have called an ambulance. They should have called uh, search and rescue. What if she couldn't find she? That's the problem. The assumption and the fact that, yes, it did end up good in the end, but what if? The what if, the assumption damage is the problem. And it's like, you make us fall in love with she, you put us on a cliffhanger, and then you make all these assumptions and don't do what you need to do, which could have left to sh- led to she dying. And that's the annoying thing. It, it, it was kind of, because somebody, I, I read somewhere, somebody said the manga adaptation of the light novel, they mentioned she told her not to call for help. Which, that, again, doesn't make sense unless she's just embarrassed, but even still then, Koguma should have, because you don't know the extent of her injuries. And that's, again, the the annoying thing. And it's like, I, it's troubling because there was two scenarios I was wanting to paint to make it okay as I was watching it. And one was, okay, what if Koguma knew that she was doing this to get attention? And that's why she was cold, and that's why she didn't call for help. That would have worked. That may have been the reasoning. Okay, so what if she said, don't call? What if this? But it didn't end up being any of those situations that made it seem right. It just turns out to be Koguma's, you know, kind of lack of social skills and her kind of seemingly cold nature. Her knowing for a fact, and again, assuming that she is not hurt and that she's going to be fine if she just gets some warmth. Or maybe even Koguma living the way that she did doesn't understand the idea of, well, you sneeze, go to the hospital. She just never has because she didn't have money to. Those kind of things were running through my head, but it didn't it didn't end up being any of that stuff, and that's what frustrated me. So that aside, she's she we're we're let's put that aside. I've got my I've ended my frustrations. She is okay. Uh, other than that, again, like I said, the rest of the episode was really great. The fact that again, we had this little brief moment of all three of them in uh, Koguma's home together. The fact that Reiko is very kind of, very comfortable (laughs) in Koguma's place and her kind of messing with Koguma's kind of social barriers or a little bubble, like grabbing the eggs out of the refrigerator. Don't assume that you can just grab whatever you want. You know, that stuff is costly. It cost me a lot of money to get that stuff. Uh, Again, this kind of brief moment of, and that contrast of she being very kind of uh, embarrassed by her underwear and that contrast to Reiko just walking in half naked. Uh, really, really cute. I, I, I had a lot of fun with that scene. She having this brief moment of kind of breaking down when she finds out that her her bike is destroyed. And, I, and it was funny because it almost... It almost feels cheesy, this scene, because it turns into she turning to Koguma and saying, have your cup fixed, have your cup bring spring. And it was it is, like I said, very... This is where we're getting in that cheesy area of, yes, we understand this show is about how great Super Cubs are, but is she really going to ask Rick Koguma to use her cub to bring spring? But it's still cute because it's technically she, this entire time we get a perspective that she is trying to catch up to these two. She wants to be a part of these two. So it makes sense to me that she hates winter right now because winter has taken the one thing she was using to possibly catch up to these two, which is her bike, she's rushing and trying to catch up to them, 
and she's lost that one thing she has that will give her some momentum to catch up to with that, that them too, and she's lost that. And so now she feels like she is stuck. And it kind of gives that perspective throughout the middle part of the episode and the idea that she hasn't been a progressing. <laughs> Italy has not been progressing or expanding anymore. It, it's territories. Uh, she's stuck. She feels stuck. She feels stuck. And it does technically give Koguma and Reiko that same perspective of they feel stuck. They don't have an opponent to chase after. So they feel stuck as well. And I, so that's why I said I really do technically like she's breakdown. It makes sense to me. Yes, it just feels a little cheesy in the idea that she's like, make your super cub fix. And she's like, I don't have it. <laughs> we don't have an attachment to our super cubs that bring spring in <laughs> pretty much. But uh, it was cute. It was it was a very cute scene. Um, and just seeing and it, it hurts me so much because it wasn't until like the very end. It seemed like Koguma acknowledges her. Again, I, I expressed my frustrations in the last episode and the idea that these two don't seem to see that she's chasing them. And even when her father says that she's chasing them, they don't see that she's chasing them. And it's it, so, like I said, it, it kind of frustrates me. And then even at the end where they're talking about going to the Blossoms and Reiko's like, yeah, let's sure, let's go on our Super Cubs. And, and she's like, I want to go. And then suddenly Koguma's like, no, we can't. It's like, what the crap? Koguma, I'm starting a lot like you at all. And then finally she turns and kind of expresses, no, actually, and it's funny because it, it, it acknowledges this moment where it says, oh, yeah, that's right, she's been chasing me. And I'm like, finally, the girl acknowledges this. She finally acknowledges what she is doing is parallel to her story where she was trying to catch up with people. She is now trying to catch up with her. But then it twists it and says, oh, Koguma acknowledges it. But in her perspective, she was chasing she from the very beginning. And her, the fact that she passed her at the very beginning and she was trying to keep up with she was the reason why she got her cub. And now she sees that she is trying to do the same thing, even though, like I said, she was technically chasing she the whole time. Not only in, not only in, you know, theoretical, she's chasing her on her bike and she's faster, but that she's seen that she was actually more social. She was more outgoing than Koguma. And so she has always been chasing she. It wasn't just about the cub. It was social as well. She's seen that she was out there. She was outgoing. She was getting stuff done in her school. And Koguma has still been, to this point, still chasing she. So I did like that. It was like a sudden love like, oh yeah, that's right. We're technically... That does technically make sense. That does expand it more. She is not chasing Koguma. Koguma, is still to this point, is still chasing she. So that was really cute. So it was nice that they finally did have, okay, we're going to go, we'll go, we'll go check out spring. We'll go, we'll use our cubs to bring you spring like you asked me to. Which again, even though the earlier comment was cheesy, it makes sense now. Because now we know that what they meant, what it means is that I can't bring you spring with my super cub. It doesn't work like that. Oh, wait, I can. I can take you to Spring. Spring's down here. We can do it. So, really cute. I like how they I like how they kind of twisted that. Even though, like I said, they're technically cheesy. They make sense. It makes sense. The writer is saying this stuff for a reason. So, it's not like he's completely crazy. <laughs> I just wonder, based on, again, somebody saying that the manga said that she said not to call for help. Um, I'm curious if the original light novel is that way as well. So, if somebody is reading the light novel, let me know. I'm kind of curious if that was a, if was out the case, or in general, if the light novel portrayed that scene differently, and maybe the adaptation just botched it, <laughs> or maybe translation issues. Whew. Yeah, that was a lot to that was a lot to get off my chest. But uh, I hope you guys enjoyed my impressions of Super Cub episode eleven. We have one more episode remaining. It's uh, kind of sad, and it, it is kind of sad in the in the other nature that I I I can no longer call this show an Ayashi K. <laughs> Except for saying, you know, episodes one to four and then six through uh, nine <laughs> is, is Yashi K. But the rest I can't really say because it's the last the, the end of the last episode in this episode has been pretty, uh, pretty rough for for the feeling of healing and relaxing and and happy nature. They've been kind of sad and uh, frustrating. So. Yeah, I still love the series, love it to death, don't get me wrong, even though I have my little, I, I can vent my frustrations too, but 
yeah, that's uh, episode 11. Hope you guys enjoyed this impressions. If you did, leave a like down below. Comment. Let me know what you thought of the episode. Subscribe if you haven't already. Share this video if you can. And y'all take care.